Uh, hello everyone, today I'm going to uh, teach you um, about using Legos for scrums. As you can see, I'm uh, at the Chicago airport today. I'm heading to uh, Germany tonight and my flight got delayed by a few hours, so I thought I'd go ahead and do a screencast. So uh, let me talk to you about the kind of problems I was facing. So one of the problems that I faced during my training is uh, I, I just really just don't like standing up and doing PowerPoint slides and having everybody take, no take notes. I just don't feel like people learn a lot that way. And, um, you know, if people just sit on their uh, butt all day learning, uh, trying to learn something, I just don't feel like uh, they can get their full body into the training class. I feel like if I just do PowerPoint slides, uh, a lot of people are just tied to their chair. And, you know, just in general, I think some classes are just sheer boring and two days of anything can really uh, make somebody sleeping. <laughs> uh, so what was my plan? So I've uh, been reading this book called Training from the Back of the Room, and I've uh, thought of some ways to try to get out of the front uh, from doing the presentation. And um, with the help from Aaron Sanders, who is one of the uh, rally coaches, uh, I met him at a dinner one night, and he uh, told me about this Lego activity, and I was uh, really intrigued by it. So what Aaron told me to do was go out and buy a bunch of Legos and teach the teams how to build a Lego city using uh, the scrum practices. So here's my uh, $500 worth of Legos. It didn't buy me near as much as I want, but... Uh, it kind of got me started, so I had a few kits and then a couple buckets of just uh, empty Legos. And uh, once I did that, I uh, had my wife, uh, Lindsay, start building these things to figure out how much time it would take to build each of these sets. So while she was building Legos and keeping track of it, I was building, busy building the new set of slides uh, in order to do the presentation for the uh, kickoff. So the Lego game. So here's kind of my agenda for the day. I try to get all my slides out of the way from 8 to noon. And then from 1 to 5, it was mostly uh, practicing, building stories, doing story points, those kind of things. And then on Thursday, we spent uh, half of the day doing uh, demos, building things, doing retros, trying to figure out how we could actually build uh, better Legos. And then in the afternoon, I just walked them through some... Uh, tooling and then we did a retro and we were done probably about three o'clock. So I first started with the product vision. I told them that we needed to build an integrated city with all these teams. And, and what I told them is is I've got to um, build a city out of $500 worth of Legos in less than four hours. So whatever we come up with, we've got to be able to build it. So here's what they came up with. They called their uh, city Paradiseville and some of the key characteristics were uh, low-cost housing, entertainment, had some landscaping, had some outdoor activities, even had a casino, helicopter rides, tennis courts. So that was kind of our vision um, and the key characteristics that we wanted to focus on. So then once we had that we needed to start building our backlog. So again I think most people are familiar with the scaled agile delivery model so right now we kind of had our um, investment, or not our investment, our epic. Our epic was Paradiseville, and then what we needed to do was break those into features and stories that we could actually start working on. So here's kind of what it looks like. So we had uh, Paradiseville, that was our epic, and then we had transportation, uh, what was our feature, and then we had stories that were like bus, bus station, car, boat, um, those types of things and then we had housing and we had hotels we I think we had like four or five of them then we had a couple uh, uh, hotels and then we had entertainment along with a few other things so those that's kind of our structure so we did epics features and then stories and then we wrote acceptance criteria for all of the stories so here uh, you can see uh, what the mess looked like we had lots of parts to build lots of different things uh, you can see that I had some predefined sets so up here on the top you can see I had some houses here was a pizzeria, but a lot of these things were just um, able for anybody to build. This is kind of a garage with a boat, a uh, surf shack, and um, this was a skate shop. So then we had to build our release plan. So each team was given four sprints. Uh, I built a backlog, and then they were they uh, story pointed them all, and then built those 
into their sprints to try to figure out how much they could get done in 10 minutes. Uh, here's a picture that I snapped that was pretty interesting. So each team was trying to figure out theirs. Uh, this guy in the back was trying to figure out uh, when the bus was going to need to be built because he was building the bus station. So he was trying to figure out which team uh, they were going to build it in. So you can see lots of conversations happening here on what they wanted to do. I actually let them pick off the backlog. So I didn't assign any team uh, specifically what they had to work on. Then we started sprinting, so you can see our first sprint team started marking out uh, where they wanted to lay their things at, and you can see this team uh, is actively working on just one thing in order to get it built by the end of the sprint. Uh, this is about the second sprint, so you can see a few things on there, uh, lots of requirements. You can see some technical debt laying around. This is our fire station. This is our mall. Uh, here's our bus station, and then got something hanging in the middle and then another team working on something else. Uh, here's a third sprint so you can see we got our parking garage, we got some houses, we got our mall again, we got a water station, fire department again, teams are actively uh, building something again. I also kept track of uh, value delivered so you can see first sprint didn't build, build much. We almost had a lot of things done but not enough and then you can quickly see uh, our second sprint we really started um, delivering things and then we also had our story point burn up too so we kind of tracked these as we want and then we also did a retro at the end of every sprint uh, just one of them that was good was uh, in the first sprint I was the only person that could accept work and they said if we had more people to accept work we could actually get more things done so what were the results uh, here's what the class looked like you can see in the bottom uh, Here's kind of an airport. Here's a drive-in movie theater. Lots of lots of houses. We got a church, and we've got uh, a lot of happy people uh, working on stuff. And then on the right, you can see lots of stories uh, completed. Uh, here's a picture of you with one of the guys. Uh, he's pretty excited about what we actually got accomplished in the last uh, four hours. And then here's an email that I received from uh, one of the guys. So Lego experiment was great. I constantly challenge the teams. Well done, Chad. Creative and innovative. Way better than recording. Way better than reading a bunch of PowerPoints. So uh, I'm going to uh, try this experiment again uh, in Germany here in a couple days. So uh, I'll report back with some new pictures and uh, tell you if I changed anything differently. So again, here's a little background on myself. Uh, hope that helped. Uh, if anybody got any questions, you can... Uh,